Hello, friends. I wanted to talk about a, a couple things today. First thing I wanted to chat about is this idea of, of thinking you might have some privacy when you're on your computer or your phone. Let's just talk about your phone. If you have a smartphone, if you have any phone that's not a landline, and even probably the landline, but let's we'll talk about smarts, but phones, because that's what that's what we all have these days. If you have a smartphone, everything you do on there is being recorded. In, in Google, some of you are saying, well, yeah, of course we know that. But here's something that I really think 90, 95% of people don't realize. And if you're one of these people, I, I hope you'll you'll pay attention and bear with me a little bit. You know how sometimes there'll be a screen that pops up that says, do you want to uh, have your location tracker on or off? And then you click off. Do you think that Google just stops tracking you and recording where you go? They don't. They're still recording. Now think if you were a, uh, what most people would say would be a bad guy. Let's say you're Osama bin Laden or you're some big uh, cartel drug dealer. Uh, you run the, the Mexican cocaine industry or something like that. And you go to LA and you get a cell phone. <clears throat> and then you think, oh, <laughs> the feds aren't going to be able to follow me. I'm just going to click no. And then Google is just going to not track me anymore. No. Now, if you are a little podunk hay farmer who lives in the middle of nowhere like I do, they don't care. They don't care. I'm not a big deal. They could care less what I'm doing. But if something all of a sudden happened and I became public enemy number one, you don't think they could subpoena Google and find this information? Well, of course they could. Now, do I think they're going to? Absolutely not. I don't anticipate myself being involved in anything like that. Um, just, I don't even see that happening. Um, but if they, if it ever did, they're going to know everywhere I went and everything I did. You can't turn your phone mic off. You can't turn your tracker off. Now you can turn it off so that you can't see it so that you can't use it, but you can't turn it off so that Google can't see it. Now, there are, in, in these big companies, there are compliance federal officers who work with the company and have their offices there, and, and they share information to, to stop terrorism, domestic terrorism, or to stop money laundering, or, or these horrific things. They're working together, big industry and, and big government, to help keep the rest of us safe. And in doing so, they have all the back doors they need. If they want some information, they can most certainly get it. And then you're thinking, well, they would first have to get a subpoena. They might sometimes go to that kind of effort. Depends on how big of a deal it is. But just know that thanks to, and no, no offense if you're a person who was supporting it at the time. I don't remember which, I believe it was the Republican Party that was all about the Patriot Act. And they didn't realize what they were doing. But the Patriot Act and other similar laws have gone into effect, and you are being tracked. You're being monitored. Now, they're, again, they're not listening. They don't care what you're talking about, but they can hear it. And just because you turn the little button off that says your mic is off, no, it's not. Just because you you say, I'm not allowing camera access. Do you really think that the phone manufacturer, let's say it's Motorola, and your internet service provider, your cell phone service people, your Verizon, your Comcast, whatever, you really don't think that they have steps in place so that domestic terrorists can be tracked and we can, if we ever need to look into them, we have the information there. Of course they do. So, not saying change what you're doing. Don't do anything illegal. Don't do anything wrong. Don't do anything bad. I, of course, would never suggest that you would do something like that. I, the last thing I would want is somebody going out and smoking marijuana or or getting married without a license. or like I, I don't want you to go out and commit crimes. Definitely don't ever do that. But just know that even if you're a, a good person who's not out doing bad things, 
they can follow you if they want to. They're probably not, but they can if they want to. So there's a, a place in Utah, the Utah Data Center, that the information is, is kept. That's where a lot of the information is kept. And that's not the only place. There are other places. As technology improves, I'm sure they're storing some on Amazon and so on and so forth. So let's just say that I was one of those privacy guys who thought, hey, you know, they, 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 big government, big industry shouldn't be able to follow everything that people do and people shouldn't be products and all of this stuff. And let's say I started up my own version of Google or uh, YouTube or, or something like that, some social media platform, uh, some something like PayPal or anything like that. Well, there would be a lot of regulatory stuff that I would need to go through that I would need to do. And, uh, you know, they're not going to just let me start up a bank. Like, like you can't just do that. You have to go through all kinds of financial regulation stuff. Same thing with any company. So what the government would do is say, hey, you know, we're not here to mess with you. I'm sure that the, the ATF people and the FCC people and the OSHA people, when they come out and talk to the company owners in the beginning, they're so nice. And they're just, hey, you know what? We're not out to get anybody here. We're just out to, to get voluntary compliance. We just want, we want to keep people safe. And we'd like to go over some things with you that some people have done that they've kind of gotten themselves in trouble. We'd like to help you prevent, you know, prevent yourself from getting in trouble with the regulations. We're here kind of on your team to help keep you from doing that. So here's some things that we need to do. Um, you know, we need to be able to have a back door into your, your system, obviously, um, because if there's somebody putting out videos and they're threatening to, you know, kill people or whatever, and then all of a sudden they take all the videos down, well, <laughs> our investigation, we need that information so that we can finish our investigation and stop this person before they kill more people. So we, we know you understand that you need to comply with that and you can do the record keeping and just know that it, it has to be perfect. Um, if we come to you and we say you, we want it, we might do a subpoena thing, or we might just say that, Hey, it's a terrorism thing. And if we say terrorism, then no holds barred. Patriot Act goes into effect. Like we get to just, you have to hand over everything immediately right now. Well, so this conversation would, would be had. And then I might say, you know, I'm a hard headed knucklehead kind of dude. And, and I'm not going to go for this. Um, no, you don't get to get my information. And, and so I'm just, I'm basically saying, no, I'm, I'm doing what a, a freedom loving man should do. And I'm standing up to the government, the tyrannical government. And I'm saying, no, yeah, perhaps we're not going to catch some bad guy. Um, but, but the world isn't about security. The world is about freedom in my, in my personal view. And I could be wrong, but, but that's my, my value system. And, and that's what I prefer. And it's my company. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, do you think the government agents are just going to say, oh, oh, <laughs> Yeah, we thought you'd say yes, but yeah, no big deal. Whatever. Okay, thank you. Hey, have a good day, guy. Or do you think maybe there could be a next step? Do you think they might take the next step? Do you think they might then suddenly find that I hadn't filled out a, a form 1234-4473-16-Bravo-87 like I should have? And that I used blue ink instead of black and, and that I forgot to dot an I. You think they're not going to find something? You think they're not going to audit me, have the IRS audit me? You think they're not going to recheck everything and say, oh, you know what? You lied on your application for your electricity at your house or like just anything to put some leverage on. Do you really think they would just let that go and walk away? After all, these government agents are there to make sure everybody's safe. And are they going to let people be unsafe just because some guy's been a knucklehead? Of course not. They're going to then take it to the next step. Now, do you think, now I don't know if this stuff actually happens. Maybe it is, well, it has happened a bunch, but maybe it stopped happening. Maybe the world is a civilized place now, and maybe this doesn't happen anymore. But this is what used to happen in the old days back when governments were comprised of people who were, I don't know, not very kind or loving or honest or um, freedom loving. So this was back in the old days. They would have somebody come to me and say, hey, dude, here's the deal. 
uh, do you want me to kill your wife and your your son and your daughter and your dog and oh and rape them all in the meantime? And do, do you want me to just make your life really miserable, uh, especially for your aunt Betty Sue at one two three Elm Street in Springfield? Um, do do you want me to go do all these nasty things to those people, or do you think maybe we're going to get the back door into your uh, whatever platform it is that I was trying to do? Because as as we all know hay farmers are, are pretty much tech people. So <laughs> I should be using myself in this example, but, but, but they're saying this to me and they're saying, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to do something really nasty to you. Do you think I'm going to really stand up to that and say, oh, well, fine. Yeah. Go ahead and kill all the family and the relatives and the, the extended family and the neighbors. And yep. Yeah, okay. I understand, but I'm by golly standing up for freedom. Do You really think I'm going to do that? How many people have the stuff to stand up? To that kind of force. Now, I think there are probably a pretty good number of people, probably a thousand, maybe 2000 people in the United States who would give up their lives for freedom. But would they give up their kids' lives? Would they give up their neighbor's children's lives? Would they do all of that? No. Now we're talking about a tiny number and I ain't one of them. So the government says you're putting in this back door. You've been telling everybody in your marketing and your advertising, you've been saying that you are a complete privacy type of company. You don't store any user's information. It can be anonymous. You have your own systems, but you delete everything and you couldn't even look back if you need to. Well, Shepard, you're going to need to keep talking that same talk. And you cannot divulge that we had this conversation in which I threatened you with a bunch of stuff. If you ever do say, hey, there is a back door, this isn't as private as I said it was, or if you decide to shut down the company before we want you to, um, we're going to do that bad stuff to the, the people who you love. Do you think I'm going to, do you think I'm really going to go online and, and be on a video that the whole world can see, including this, this agent, and I'm going to say, hey, you can keep your information safe on our platform or give you some sort of signal. Of course not. They told me that if I do the wink, wink thing, they're going to kill everybody I love. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just go along with it. And I'm going to be collecting all of your information. I don't want to. I still love freedom. Boy, do I hate those bastards like you wouldn't believe. But am I really going to do something about it? Probably not. Now, I'm using myself in this example, and I'm a coward. So there are probably a lot of people out there, not from California or Chicago or New York, um, because those people are cowards. But the rest of you, the rest of you who haven't had really strict gun laws go into effect, those of you who are still saying, they're going to pry them from my cold, dead hands. I'll tell you, that's the line. They would never come after the American people with, you know, to take their guns away. I say, oh, what about what about New York? What about Chicago? What about California? Well, you know, they you just try that around here. And boy, I know a bunch of good old boys, a lot of former military guys. We're not going to put up with that. A lot of us, you know, ex-cops, we're not going to we're not going to let that happen. <laughs> um, and I think they might actually believe in their own bravado. No, I'm made of the same stuff that the people in California are made of. Now, I'm not made of the same stuff that the big city softies are made of, but the, but the good, hardworking oil field workers and tow truck drivers and farmers and mechanics and ranchers and contractors and, and the, the people who are out digging ditches, getting stuff done, those people, I'm, I'm made of the same stuff they are. And I know I don't have the guts to stand up to the man. And I know the people in California didn't stand up to the man. I mean, how many, go, go do some research. When California had implemented all these horrible laws over the years, horrible gun laws in, in, in Chicago, in New York, look at how many cases, how many people do you think stood up for their rights? The buck stops here. Oh, I'm not putting up with that. What do you think? Uh, a million people who went up against the man and were killed or imprisoned? I'd say fewer than a thousand, fewer than a hundred. I mean, we don't hear about any of them. How many people really did? Now there are a few people. There's the Lavoy Finicum type. You know what freedom is and what freedom isn't. Stand. Because when you stand, 
others will stand with you. No matter how it ends, it matters how you stand. This is Lavoy Finicum, One Cowboy Stands for Freedom. See you later. The Randy Weaver and and the the Waco, the Waco, whatever people like there. There are a few people who have just said, "No, nah, not going to do that." And, and maybe circumstances have driven them to that. Maybe they just had a big pair. I don't know. But by and large, ninety nine point nine percent. I could probably add a few more nines on there. 99.9% of tough guys who sit around at the bar talking about how tough they are and how they're not taking my guns, they're not taking my freedom, they're not taking away my privacy. Um, by golly, I'm you try that around here. Nope. So I'm painting a pretty bleak picture here as I as I just chit chat and think about technology. Am, am I saying that there's no hope? Am I saying that we're all just out of luck and and the the man Leviathan he just he's so powerful he knows everything and we don't stand a chance as peaceful human beings to continue living peaceful good lives without bowing to the man and paying 30 40 50 80 90 percent in uh, theft or, or as they call them taxes am I am I saying that everything is doom and gloom I don't think so the good news is, that the bigger and more powerful an organization becomes, the more centralized it becomes, it becomes a very, very, very complex organism. And complex things can't be run as well as simple things. Just as nobody could run the world, it's also hard to run Walmart or Google. Here's an example. For one of my businesses, I was contacted by a Google salesperson two weeks ago. Hey, we would like to schedule a half an hour to talk about AdWords and uh, let you see how we can help you with that. Went, okay, I scheduled the time. It was a no-show. Eight minutes later, oh yeah, meeting ran longer and we didn't do it. Well, I'd gone out of my way to, I don't miss appointments. Like that's just not how I live. That's not, you, you keep your word. And I said, pretty much, well, I'm not dealing with you again. And they sent another email. Oh, I want to meet with you. And it was a different guy. I said, okay, I'll give him another chance. Well, today was that meeting <laughs> and I'm out there, take a break from plowing. Boy, we got a nasty one coming in here. It's uh, supposed to get down to about 17 below uh, tonight. Been snowing all day, wind blowing. A couple of days ago, we had a 45 mile an hour wind. And I know there are some places that get a lot more than that, but it's been a little, a little brutal here. Anyway, I take a break from my snow plowing and I come inside and I get ready for the meeting today. And, and it's a no show. I write and I said, you know, what's the deal? We're not meeting. And, you know, five minutes into it or so. And, and finally he writes back and says, Oh yeah, there must've been a misunderstanding. And your guy is Ethan, not me. Now, why am I giving this example of dealing with this? This is Google. This is the powerful company that I am so scared of. They can't even hire a person who is competent enough to keep a sales call. You get the, you you reach out to 100 people, you finally get one who says, yes, I'll listen to your pitch. That's important. Like anybody who's into, who owns their own business or who knows sales are like, yeah, you don't lose that appointment. And then they, they messed it up. And then they had another chance and they messed that up. This is who we're dealing with. We're dealing with Google. We're dealing with government employees. Thank goodness. So I think that, implosion is way more likely to be the best, I don't know, circumstance that helps people who are peaceful, who are humanitarian types. I think that's the best chance we have is just letting these big organizations crumble. Um, yeah, they're, they're powerful. They're smart. You take a team of Navy SEALs. They're hardcore. They could take out Five times that number of me and my country buddies, we, we think we're tough because we can shoot a squirrel or whatever, but those guys are really tough, but they don't have that many of them. And if you take away that upper crust, now there are there are IRS agents who graduated in the top half of their class. I'll bet you the IRS has four to eight agents who did graduate in the top half of their class. They're some smart people. But rank and file, probably not. FBI agents? 
all of the different people in the government. Now, when they decide to pick on somebody, if they want to pick on me, are they going to be successful? Absolutely. I'm not smart enough to go up against them. Um, I'm not going to fight them. But if they're going after millions of people, yeah, they're, they're too complex of an organization to run efficiently. They've gotten too big for their britches, and that's where the hope comes up. Um, that's where small companies can beat Google. Because if some smaller company says, yeah, we don't have as many people using our search engine, but our salesman will actually show up for a meeting to try to sell you something. Like, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to give them a chance. Because the big companies, when they fail badly enough, that's the opening that little companies need to get a, a toehold. That's capitalism. That's a free market. Isn't that beautiful? So what my buddy Yaakov says, yeah, we need to quit talking about all this. Or, he says, we don't need to talk about all this voluntarist liberty stuff. He says, we need more people to get smart, work hard, and come up with new businesses, new ideas. New ideas. We need free market solutions. You don't even have to know the fundamentals of, of libertarianism. You just have to go out and live as a free person, starting up a company and doing things. That's all you really need to do. And he, he could be right. Now, I'm into the education thing. I, I love the idea of, of sharing with the, the shepherd of well, 16 years ago now. Uh, if that guy, the former me, uh, had had some even better information to, to look at or could have been reached in a different way, well, it could have helped speed up my journey. So I love the idea of all of us in our different ways trying to educate the world and say, hey, we've got a little bit of information if you're interested. Uh, we could be wrong, but will you look at this and see if it makes sense to you if you have any interest in it? That's my area of interest. I think between education, other people going out and working hard and starting businesses, starting tech companies, maybe a couple of them having the guts to, to stand up to the man. I think in time, we human critters, we'll have some ups and downs. We get, might get 98% of us wiped out by this or that or uh, whatever, but we're we're survivors. We're kind of we're kind of tough folk. We're we're built to survive, as as Robert Ardrey talked about in uh, uh, African Genesis. We're gonna make it. We're gonna be okay. Now, when I say we, I mean uh, the humanity. And I'm not saying we're gonna be okay in two years or twenty years, but in the long run, I guess it'll all work out. And if it doesn't, then uh, yeah, guess I was wrong on that one. What do you think?